Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Down Periscope, Up Periscope. We're continuing on with our seasonal content. This is episode six. So in this episode, I want to talk about the maintenance of the submarine as a museum ship. So the channel has been getting a lot of attention, particularly on YouTube lately. And I want to use this episode to address a couple of issues that are popping up, particularly those that are concerning how the submarine is maintained and to clarify what our roles as tour guides are. So let's talk about that. Active naval vessels, ships, and submarines are usually dry docked every few years for maintenance for whatever reason. Now, Blueback herself went into dry dock during her active service about 11 times, and she's been a museum ship at OMSI since 1994. So, as of May of 2025, she's actually served as a museum ship for 31 years. That is, as long as her actual service was in the U.S. Navy. Museum ships themselves are generally dry docked every 20 or 30 years, depending on the conditions, the availability, the funding, the resources, etc. So 20 years, give or take. Blueback's last dry docking as a museum ship was in 1998, and a ton of work was done at her at the time to get her in even better shape where she pretty much stands today. And I have actually met some of the people who are part of the process of the dry docking or who are otherwise related to those people or who are in the know. But this episode is not really about the dry docking since that probably deserves a lot more research and more time for me to dig up evidence and photos and reports of what was done during that dry docking. So I'll save that for a later time. But I frequently get asked questions regarding Blueback's current and maintenance status. How often is she dry docked? What do we do in terms of protecting the hull against corrosion. When is the hull going to be painted? Why don't we just do X, Y, and Z, and this, that, and the other? Well, simply put, my answer is that none of that stuff is in our job description, and all of that stuff is above our pay grade and above our authority to even make those decisions. Secondly, and most importantly, is that we just don't have the wherewithal, that is, the resources and the money, to do a lot of the things regarding the maintenance that we want to do with the submarine. So let me start off by being a tour guide. So as I mentioned before in this podcast, as tour guides on Blueback, we're hired to give interpretive tours on the submarine. We need to know the submarine, its basic systems, its history, and the essential science behind what submarines do. And then we have to present that to groups of visitors. And interestingly enough, it's only when visitors physically arrive at the boat for tours that our responsibilities actually kick in. So what I mean is that on Blueback, as tour guides, we do not sell tickets. We do not book events for tours on the submarine. We do not set the ticket prices. We do not raise grant money. We do not handle donations, and we do not market the submarine. All of that stuff is literally handled through other departments in the museum. And furthermore, Blueback is not a concession at the museum. That is, it's not run independently from the museum itself. It is operated through the museum because it's on permanent loan. It's a permanent exhibit. Unlike, say, the museum's cafe or restaurant, which basically just lease space in the museum to run their own business. But Blueback is, does not do that. So everything that happens on the submarine is actually done under the authority of the higher ups at the museum. Now, even my job as the supervisor of the submarine is not to do any of those things either. My authority does not extend that far. I manage the day-to-day -day operations on the submarine during the tours, and I lead and supervise the crew and the tour guides in their jobs. Now, what maintenance we do do on the submarine daily is purely on a, shall we say, surface level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, see what I did there? So basically, we swab the decks, we wipe down the surfaces, we change the burnt-out light bulbs, we ensure that the tours are conducted safely. So in other words, literally, we just work here. We don't make the policy. 
Now, prior to the pandemic, there was actually a dedicated volunteer maintenance crew who would come in during the off season and they would do the more time consuming technical maintenance jobs on the submarine that we just didn't have time to do during normal operations. That being said, the maintenance crew has not returned after COVID. The reasons for this are many, but mostly because the maintenance crew was, well, a bunch of old retired guys and they were getting too tired to do much work anymore. And many of them were getting older and more frail, so they were concerned about their health. So they just simply have never come back. And in short, it would take a lot to get the maintenance crew back, even though we want them back. But I'm not holding my breath for them at this point. Another thing that I mentioned before on this podcast is the nature of OMSI itself as a museum. Because OMSI is not an artifact-heavy museum like the Smithsonian or the American Museum of Natural History, just to give some examples. For one thing, OMSI could only dream of having the budget of those institutions. And secondly, the artifacts at OMSI are not really sealed behind like glass cases or stored in some massive air-conditioned basement archive with an army of curatorial staff with white gloves going over every centimeter of the artifacts with a fine brush and fine-tooth comb so they can be lovingly preserved for posterity. That doesn't happen. One thing I learned when becoming a museum professional is that, despite what Indiana Jones said about this and that belongs in a museum... The reality is that any exhibit which can be physically handled and touched will inevitably get destroyed. So I know people think like, oh, you're here to preserve it, right? And keep it you know, safe and all that. No, it, if it can be touched, it will get ruined. And even artifacts that are secured behind glass or whatever are still subject to the ravages of time and the elements will eventually make their way in. And there's always more dust and grime then there is time and staff members to keep all this stuff clean. So while ideologically museums may stand for education and the preservation of things, the reality is that nothing truly lasts forever. So keep these responsibilities and realities in mind, and let's move on to some of the questions. Dry docking. There are currently no immediate plans to dry dock blueback, even though that is probably the biggest thing on our wish list as a crew. Everybody knows this. It's no secret. Like, the boat is dirty in places. The hull is in need of inspection, sandblasting, repainting, and possibly even repair in a number of places. Things on the boat itself are falling apart and are in desperate need of replacement, repair, or refurbishment. The problem is that dry docking is a big thing, and the will to follow through with it and the lack of money are serious hindrances. One estimate I've heard is that dry docking fees alone will cost about one million dollars most likely more and that's just fees for the dry dock itself i'm not even talking about like the labor and the materials and everything else that needs to be done on the boat so in total let's say several million dollars this will not be a cheap job furthermore i've heard that in around 2018 or 2019 thereabouts everything was set up to dry dock the submarine but this little thing called the pandemic covid hit And that shut it all down. And it's never been brought back since. And furthermore, the entire museum actually almost did not survive the pandemic, from what I understand. OMSI actually got lucky and scraped through the pandemic by the skin of its teeth. Now, in contrast, other museums were not lucky. The Portland Children's Museum did not survive the pandemic. Now, since the pandemic, we've actually been struggling to rebuild the base of volunteers at the museum and proceed ahead with other plans to expand the museum and its exhibits. Now, regarding the pain, yeah, it's peeling off in places, and the boat needs some touch-ups. Now, years ago, the museum actually used to paint the submarine every year, at least everything that was above the waterline. But then along came some government agencies who, shall we say, had a problem with getting paint in the water. You see, kids, paint has chemicals, and chemicals are bad, and it kills the cute creatures in the river and contaminates things in bad ways, so we don't do that anymore. The boat is thankfully in fresh water, so corrosion of the hull is slower, but even fresh water corrodes eventually. But corrosion is still an issue. Blueback does have sacrificial anodes on the hull to protect it. But there's a problem. There's zinc. Yes, you heard right. They have the wrong anodes for fresh water. So it begs the question why aren't they the right ones? Well, 
from what I've been told, and I've talked to the guy who did this, during her last dry docking, the men doing the restoration work on the blueback could not get the proper anodes. And zinc anodes were literally the only ones they can get. So that's what got put on the submarine. Okay, I didn't do it. I wasn't working for OMSI back then. And that's what they can find. So you're probably asking like, well, can't you just get a marine engineer and have a diver go down and put the proper anodes on the hull? Okay, in general, this can't you just whatever, can't you just do X, Y, Z? We can apply this to any question regarding the submarine. Why don't we just get a safe cracker or a locksmith to open up the lock safes in the wardroom? Why don't we just reactivate one of the, the heads, the toilets, and we can set up a sewage line to pump the sewage ashore? Uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? You know, oh, it can all be done for fairly cheap. No problem. Why don't you guys just do that? Well, simply put, here's the answer. <laughs> you serious? You see, the reality is that museum ships of any kind are expensive to run and maintain. And even if what you're describing is not that expensive, I can tell you that the money and budgets on the submarine are extremely, extremely tight. Now, I am bound by confidentiality not to disclose financial information about the museum, but I will say this. The words volunteer and donation take on a whole new meaning when you work for a nonprofit organization like a museum. So case in point, the volunteer who actually 3D printed up our new submarine model display and the Fairbanks Morse engine piston, that guy did that all gratis for free for nothing. We just asked him one day, he's like, hey, uh, you got a 3D printer, man. Can you do this, that, and the other? He was like, oh yeah, sure. Give me some time. And so he, you know, he sent me the, the mock-ups and the, the prototypes and this, and he said what he, he kept me abreast of what he's going to do. And he did that all for us. So we are eternally grateful for this guy. And I've put him in for some recognition. So I'm, ho I'm hoping he gets some. So here's the thing. For those people who leave comments on the YouTube channel about how we should just do this and how we should just do that, you know, I, I understand that you're trying to be helpful. Okay, I know that. But the reality is that it's really counterproductive and it doesn't really accomplish anything. Trust me, everything that you have mentioned in the comment section about how we can fix the submarine and do this, that, and the other, it's not been lost on us. It's already been considered. We know this. We know this submarine and what's required to run it because we're on it every day. So don't be like the whiny Mr. Slavin in The Hunt for October. We have no room to maneuver in this canyons, Captain. If the countermeasure doesn't work- Shut up. I'm gonna end off this by saying, you know, instead of leaving me all these suggestions about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. If you want to make a positive change on Blueback, I recommend go to OMSI's website, O-M-S-I, OMSI.edu, and you'll find ways to support the museum and donate. These donations can be monetary. They can be one time. They can be reoccurring. Um, they can even be physical artifacts and exhibits if you want to donate stuff like that. Being a museum, it's a nonprofit. And and nonprofits like OMSI benefit tremendously from donations from individuals or organizations. So, and that is where a lot of our operating money comes from. So donations from people like you. Don't tell me, tell the museum, right? Donate money, right? Put time and effort. And, you know, maybe consider even coming down and volunteering for us, right? You can help out at the museum and donate your time. So that's what really makes the difference on the submarine as museum ship and at the museum itself. So the people who really put out the time to get up off their, off their chairs, out from behind their screens, out from, you know, behind their desks and put the time in and really work in. So I am always grateful for our volunteers who are on the submarine, who are working at the museum. They help us out tremendously and we would not be anywhere without their hard work, their dedication and the time. And we would not be anywhere without the generous donations of a lot of the people and the organizations who have worked to see the museum where it is today. So that's my little spiel. So, hey, consider donating rather than leaving a YouTube comment. So there's that. It's uh, pretty short and sweet. I hope everyone has a good day and I will see you later.